If you want to create a loosely coupled monolith that isn't a big ball of mud, but are curious how that project and solution would be structured, this video is for you. Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design in .NET. So if you're interested in those topics, make sure to subscribe. In my video about creating a loosely coupled monolith, which I will have a link in the description to that original video, I use this slide to illustrate having kind of two top level processes a HP server, which is going to be ASP.NET Core, and a message processor, which will deal with messages from a message broker. And below that, actually having bounded contexts, which are the blue, um, that have three different projects actually inside them, a contracts project, implementation, and tests. And each one of those, each one of those bounded contexts, having its own database. So what I'm going to do now is jump in Rider and actually provide an implementation of what this would actually look like in .NET and C-sharp projects of how this would all actually be structured. So I have a solution here that has two different solution folders, one for sales and one for shipping. Basically, these are bound to context or whatever you want to define your boundary as ultimately. Within those uh, solution folders for sales, I have a sales project which is a C-sharp project a sales.contract and a sales.test and the same thing for shipping. I have the sales project open as well as you can see on the left menu, but the key distinction here is that the sales project only has a reference to the sales.contracts project. It does not have any reference to shipping. So you can see I'm referencing uh, Microsoft ASP.NET Core. I'll get to that in a little bit as long with entity framework as a package reference. But in terms of actual project references, I'm only referencing, referencing the sales contract project. So only referencing the other project with that's within this bounded context. The same applies for shipping. The shipping project just has the dependency on the shipping contracts project. The contracts projects in each bounded context, those are the uh, projects that can be referenced from other bounded contexts. So for example, shipping, I could add a reference to the sales contracts, and that's okay. But I'm never gonna reference the actual implementation, which is gonna be the sales project itself. The contracts project will contain things like interfaces, delegates, or simple DTOs that are generally gonna rep represent messages or events. I'll get into eventing and messaging and communication between bounded contexts in separate videos. This one, I just wanna cover the structure. So that's actually what's gonna be in the contracts project eventually. So the next thing I've done is created a new ASP.NET Core project, just basically using .NET New Web. So it's just basically a blank web uh, project, but it's gonna be one of two top level projects that are actually gonna be the processes we're actually gonna run. So this is a project that's gonna have references to the bounded context, specifically the implementations. So the ASP.NET Core project has a reference to sales and has a reference to shipping. Since the top level applications are actually the one doing things like configure services and configuring the service uh, collection, and in case of ASP.NET Core in our startup class, what we need to do is this is where we're doing that composition of using all the other bounded contexts and their implementations to register everything they need. So in order to do that and to demonstrate this, in the sales context, I've actually created a entity framework uh, database context that just has one DB set of orders. So just for example purposes here. But what I've done is I've created a file called configure services, which is just an extension method uh, for I service collection, where I'm gonna be adding that database context. What this allows me to do is do that for each individual bounded context. I can have one in shipping that I've defined. It doesn't have anything in it yet. But what that allows me to do is go into the ASP.NET Core startup and under configure services, we can then call uh, services dot add uh, sales and services add shipping. So again, this is where we're doing the composition of adding all those bound contexts and let them maintain and deal with their own registrations. Now, since we're using ASP.NET Core, and if you're using something like MVC for all your routes, well, those would automatically get picked up since these assemblies are going to be loaded. But you can do something similar just by using extension methods to, for example, if you were doing using the route to code to map different routes. So what I've done over here is in the sales project, I've created a endpoints class, again, with an extension method on the I endpoint route builder. And I've just created this uh, route to code on map get where I'm just writing hello world. 
And then I've done the same thing in shipping where it has its own extension method to do to basically map to another uh, get request for uh, slash shipping. And the same applies here just using the extension methods in our startup. I can go to the use endpoints and then just simply call those extension methods. So map sh uh, sales, map shipping. Again, if you're using something like MVC, these are all automatically get picked up. But still, again, the idea is that all your implementation details of how you want to configure ASP.NET Core for those particular bounded contacts are done there and then reference and uh, use those configurations at the top level at ASP.NET Core. So the second top level is gonna be our worker project. And just like ASP.NET Core, it's going to use a host, but more importantly, there's now the generic host builder. So instead of being a web host, it's actually just a generic host. So I'm creating a generic host here, and I have configure services, just like I did in the startup. So of course, because I'm going to be referencing, since I'm at the top level, I'm going to be referencing the projects of sales and shipping. Now I have access to call services.add shipping add sales and services dot add shipping. And what I can be doing here is because this project is actually going to be the one that's going to be talking to a message broker and dealing with dispatching to our actual projects, the code for executing uh, certain messages that are received. What I can actually do is create a hosted service, which is really like a background process that's gonna be using the same logging, the same DI, everything that's configured, similar to a startup of configure, configure services, we're gonna get that with a hosted service. So the hosted service, like I said, it's just a background service that you implement and you have to implement execute async. And here I've left it blank, but this is ultimately where I'll show in future videos where you're gonna be talking to a message broker and dispatching these messages to the relevant handlers. So if I jump back to the program, it's as simple as now calling services.add hosted service in our message processor. So now we've wired up uh, dependency injection for our two bounded contacts. And now our message processor, which we'll implement later, can use all the types and resolve everything because we're at the top le level of everything we've registered within the bounded context of sales and shipping. So there we go, we have basically our two top levels, and then we have our bounded contacts of sales and shipping. And again, these in implementation projects are only referenced from the top level. Shipping has no reference to sales, and sales has no reference to shipping. These are completely independent. They do have references, however, to the contracts project, but those are, again, just uh, contain things like simple POCO DTO objects that are gonna represent events and messages. They could contain maybe interfaces or delegates that we'll get into later, but preferably just messages that you'll use basically for uh, transferring over the wire, uh, these particular objects, so you can be serializing and deserializing them. That's what they're there for. But again, they're pretty much independent. And our top level is really the ones doing the composition of taking all of these projects however many of them you may have, and exposing them, exposing their HTTP, exposing a way for them to process messages. So that's how you create the solution and project structure and how everything's referenced to create a loosely coupled monolith. In my next video, I'll cover how the messaging actually works with that worker, how you're doing asynchronous messaging, what that contract project really looks like, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. The last video, which I will provide a link for in the description, which is the primer, had a lot of discussion on it and comments and questions, which I really appreciate. So let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more software architecture related videos.